A tymczasem e, zapraszamy Morten Ciebie Lund. na scenę. Morten Lund jest dzisiaj z nami. Brawa ogromne. Warmly. Welcome. Welcome. Poland. Sorry, it's yours. Hello, 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 everyone. Um, yeah, thank you for for spending your time and extending your evening to listen to my stuff. Um, I always get a little bit nervous in the beginning, so I have to get over it. Um, but basically, I I have no clue what they just said about me. But I'm pretty sure it was something close to the truth that I'm partly crazy and I can't stop doing what I what I'm set in life to do. So basically, if we only have 40 minutes now, we, we're in a bit of, in a little bit of a hurry because I have a lot of stuff I want to tell you. But but first of all, I think it's important to understand that the and I'll come back to it. The, the potential of, of doing a startup in a country like Poland is, is tremendous. I'm from a country with only five million people. It's, it's pretty hard to, to make a really big business in Denmark. And that's probably why I've been extremely lucky to build a lot of international businesses. But um, I'll come back to that. First of all, I want to get all of you into the, to the idea. If you really want to do a startup, I think a lot of people forget to to tell about the, the, the first and the most important thing, which is that it's all about sales. And uh, most of it is, is more or less like a lot of, of love affairs. My, uh, my wife always tells me when, when I get into a new deal, it, 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 it is like a love affair. I mean, you have a team where you really have to, to find a, a special rhythm and a special chemistry. And, um, and you also have to get the clients to really like you and be in a, in a love affair with you. So that's, um, that's I think, the, the idea of say, saying that, it, I mean, you don't necessarily have to fake it. I hear that some women do, but I'm not sure. Um, the, the, the essence here is that it has to be fun. And um, we can have a little bit of of this song playing, just play 10 seconds, and then let's get started. Can you play? Well. Yeah, let's kill it here. Just kill it. Kill the song. Would you please kill the song? <laughs> okay, so it's all about sales. I am Morton. I would, uh, I could actually take all of you guys hostage here because I could check my phone and see if you would follow me. So if I don't get a hundred followers during this thing, I'll never come to Poland again. I'll, of course, I'll not do that. You know who I am. I'm a father of four. That's of course the most important thing in my life. I'm an innovator and an inventor. I don't know, really know what I am because basically, and I also think a lot of you guys who want to do interesting new businesses, in, in especially, especially in technology, it's also a lot about doing a mashup and don't be, you know, don't be too fine to use existing stuff and combine it in new ways. I'm super happy to be an advisor to really important people. I love marketing. It's, it's what I am, it's, it's, it's where I come from. I sold my first marketing agency, digital, digital agency, when I was 27 to Leo Burnett. We were just basically four guys who watched a lot of Melrose plays. Is, is, does anyone here remember Melrose plays? Maybe you do. Um, we were 20 when we saw it, so we saw there was a lot of nice women, and of course we wanted to have an advertising agency. It's fairly simple. Um, and then we also made some pretty aggressive marketing, and. Um, and one of my companies was called, uh, early companies was called Bulgard, and it was impossible to get any attention when you were an antivirus company. It's so fucking boring. So we made a little bit of marketing that was before YouTube, so our real problem was getting the servers to host this. Can we play this movie? Mm. 
Should we kill it? Kill it here. Yeah. So that was a pretty easy way to get attention. And that's a lot of what marketing is about. And I love it. I really like, after selling a, an advertising agency, I was fortunate enough to be able to go into to, to larger projects. So being part of changing something large is, of course, extremely interesting. And and of course, being part of Skype was, was crazy. It was also quite really amazing to be part of Zeco, where we launched free stock trading in the US, which got a lot of attention. And, and also, I need to tell the story about how I went into um, to landmine detection. So basically, some guys in Denmark found a way to genetically modify a plant. So if, it would, if its roots would smell TNT, this plant, the plant would turn red. And I thought that was the greatest idea ever and we spent millions and millions on it because then we would be able to detect landmines and what's, what's more terrible than landmines. But also showing how much of an idiot every inventor and every visionary is, of course nobody thought about how we should actually spread the seeds. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. But, but that's, that's how it is with, with, with innovation. You, you don't know really where you're going. And let's get a little bit into to, to where we are now. Media, the, the old version of media is dead. I mean, my children are not going to read a newspaper. It's just a fact. And I really know about it because I also burned all my money on a newspaper. I have no idea why, but that, that's how it went. Media 2.0, or however we call it, smart media, is, is, is everything I think that, that we will be doing. I think uh, Facebook is the biggest media company in the world and, and one of the most fantastic companies and it has a lot of, of interesting integration possibilities that, that all of you can use. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not sure you are thinking about how easy it is. That leads of course to, to shopping because shopping will be social. So I mean nobody wants to buy shit that nobody else can recommend. And, and that whole thing is really changing the picture. Let's see. But, but in, in reality, I think it's interesting to also understand how, how I work and, and how we, we work when, when we once in a while lucky to build a global company. First of all, it's shit hard. It's really, really hard. It takes a lot of stress. It, it's a, a lot of nerve. You have to hire and fire a lot of people. There's a lot of fights. There's a lot of legal stuff. There's, it, it, it's really hard. And that's how, that's, that's, that's how it is. And, and just having three PhDs is like having 30 fucking kids in a kindergarten. I mean, they're all so fucking smart. They think they know everything. And the, and the coders are the new rock stars. It's just without having any good looks or charm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty annoying to handle that many of them. Of course, there are a lot of amazing guys and most of my teams are really crazy good. And then it's a 360 challenge. I mean, understanding business now is not like my grandfather who had a farm, I mean his biggest speculation was of course whether he could harvest some, something at the end of the year. That, that was a big one but also when should he sell whatever he had gotten out from his fields. That was a little bit of speculation there but, but today if you want to do a small online store selling some ugly ceramics done by hippie women, then you also have to understand not only how to do the ceramics and what kind of colors, but you also have to understand what kind of server are you going to use for hosting it. Is it going to be cloud or is it going to be on a real server? How, 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 how is the whole email platform going to, going to work out? How is it going to happen with your e-commerce infrastructure? What about the stock? What about the payments? What about the marketing? What about the search engines? What about Google versus Facebook? There, there is, it's a 360 challenge that is really hard to, to understand unless you just dive into it. So there, is no real, there's no, there, there are no books. You just have to do it your way. And also, of course, there's tons of competitors because the problem with online is that the whole world is your competitor. And then remember, whenever you read about a company and it's sold, like Instagram, maybe you used it a little bit and then it was sold to Facebook, you thought, wow, that was an overnight project. Well, it's not. 
they say it was 18 months, but in reality it was 36 months. It's, always, it's normally always like five years to build a company. And if you're in it to flip and make some fast money, forget it. If you're in it to have some fun, meet some interesting people, and develop your brain, stay in. But also remember, it's not every month that the paycheck will arrive. So basically, there's a lot of stuff you have to go through. And you have to get the idea, you have to get the technology right, you have to get the pitching right, how do you actually sell this? And then of course you have to reshape the idea, refinance, the finance, it's, get the right team, get the prototype, get the law and the funding, and the failure number one, and the relaunch, because of course you fuck up. Every company fucks up a lot. Airbnb launched four times. Nobody tells the stories. You don't hear about the failure because it's, I mean, it's not really fancy to stand up and say that you're an idiot and you failed. But it happens all the time in these startups. And then you have the shareholder fights. And I mean, don't underestimate them. There's a lot of fighting. When, there's, when, we, when you can suddenly see a billion in front of you, then people with, I mean, 5% understand what it would mean to get to 6%. And it gets pretty aggressive and, of course, more legal. And you can always go back to number one. I've been really lucky to found about 100 companies. Most of them have been more or less stupid and out of crazy love to the idea of. Of, of, of seeing stuff starting up. I made tons of money with Skype. With, with, I sold more than 10 companies over $50 million. I lost everything because I fucked up with this newspaper I just referred to as Media 1.0. And then I had to focus. Suddenly I had nothing. It was kind of a relief because at least I knew when people called me they didn't want my money. But it was also a little scary to understand how, what do you actually do when you're used to sometimes, I mean, you, we didn't want to, you know, I, I didn't have a car, but sometimes we rented a fly, our own plane. We, I had a pretty nice lifestyle. My kids was getting a little bit fucked up, but <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it was probably healthy for everyone in the family. But what did I do? My, um, my wife told me to try to get a job, but <laughs> who the fuck wants to hire me? So there was only one thing to do actually, and that was to, to, to dive really, really deep. I chose two projects. I created TradeShift, which is an electronic invoicing platform, and, and Everbridge, which, which is a, a flight search engine. Um, you think about how weird it is that all these search engines, whenever you go to Lufthansa or wherever and search, it takes forever to give a result from Warsaw to Munich. How fucking difficult is it? But that whole thing we, we, have, we have fixed and, and, and worked on with, that was actually with 50 PhDs out of Bulgaria. And my Bulgat was out of Romania. And I've been a lot in the, what, what is supposed to be Eastern Europe. So, so we, we've had, we, we've dived, I, I dived really deep into some really shit boring technology to be sure that A, we could make this impact. And B, that it was also intellectually challenging. So TradeShift is now the, the largest electronic invoicing network in the world. It took us three, three and a half years. And it was not easy, but it was definitely, definitely funny. And then the really interesting thing here, and it's, it's, a, it's a sidetrack, of course, of, of what I'm trying to tell you, is that everything is becoming media. When the guys from TradeShift came and told me about this idea, I didn't really get why, what, what would be sexy about invoices. I mean, it's, it's of course, it's pretty core when you want to build a company. But then they started telling me about, you know, if every invoice was just delivered in one format and, and if, how stupid it is that everybody, I mean, types in an invoice, prints out a paper or does do a PDF, and then the guy in the other end retypes it. So we, we structured and formatted that whole world and if anybody has interest and really wants to make money, then go in and try to understand the, the trade shift API because that, that is the, the next real revolution in enterprise software. I'm pretty sure that trade shift can, can really challenge SAP because who wants to work on SAP? I mean, it's ugly, it's slow, it's old when you can take all the data out and start to do apps around it. So that, even invoicing, becomes a kind of a media because of course we introduced so that you could chat on the invoice. You could have a comment. We're used to it from Facebook. But why, if there's something with an invoice, we have to call them, did you get it? Okay. 
when, when are you going to pay? Okay. Do you like the goods? I mean, all of these questions could easily be just put in as comments in an invoice. And that, that's working now. And being the largest network, electronic invoicing network in the world means that 5.5 million businesses will be using TradeShift within 18 to 24 months. Pretty crazy. So, oh, this is moving. Um, so, so with these viral and network network effects, where we see that that, that that the paradigms are changing, I mean, I wouldn't like to to be a TV channel or to be any kind of media which is not Facebook today, because all my kids and combined with my wife, we have seven of them at home. They they don't watch TV. They watch Facebook, and then sometimes they look at the TV or, or listen to it. it, 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 it it's, a, it's a change of paradigm, and, and that's the whole social media thing. And, and if you want to have inspiration and understand how marketing has to be in the future, then have a look at this museum of me from Intel. If you put on your imagination a little bit and put your, put your, your own product or idea in the center of this, then you will see how, how media and advertising has to be. It's about you know, getting attention. And I think that we have one more movie because, I mean, it's crazy what you can do with these small viral things. I mean, don't build your company on getting attention from small stupid movies, but it's a good add-on. Can we find it? Look, an uncle the laptop. I'm pretty sure I got your attention again. I mean, it's so simple. And I mean, we did it with, with zero budget. I think these, these movies were 1,500 euros 10 years ago. So the, the, the interesting thing is that nobody in this, in the f uh, who's under 20 years old today will ever want to watch an ad that doesn't have them as a center or them as participating. They, 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 it, it, everything they, they will see from in a couple of years, maybe in 12 months, and, and then forward, will, and you will see from advertising will be with your data. It will be rich advertising with somehow your data coming into it, somehow morphed into it because, of course, you connect with Facebook. I mean, how annoying is it to buy something if they don't have connect with, I mean, a Facebook connect when you sign up? It's, I mean, it's unbearable. And that's going to be the same with advertising. And, of course, we have to remember that you have to go through all these phases again if you really want to do a startup. So there's no average normal day on the, in the office where you can just focus on one thing, and at the same time, you, you would have to, of course, be careful not to get distracted. It's a really, really, really difficult thing. So, happily, luckily for me, I was once again part of a team building a billion-dollar company. And uh, again, I failed when I tried to do many things. We were pretty successful when we did really few things. So I think I would dare to pass that on as a lesson. I mean, I'm probably a pretty, pretty bad teacher and a pretty bad guy to, 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 to copy because it, I mean, there is no bigger strategy. It's just about this whole Malcolm Gladwell idea of if, if you dive into anything, and spent the 10,000 hours, 5,000 hours, there's a pretty big chance that you'll be number one at it, especially when everything is moving as fast as it does right now. So if you're lucky to focus on something that makes sense in a business sense, but you cannot know, remember, it's, it's research and it has to be a hobby, then there's a pretty big chance you can be number one at different niches around the world. I'll come, to back, I'll come back to this niche, niche thing, because it's about finding your own niche. And of course, it's about execution. I mean, you cannot sit with your finger in your nose all day. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's around the clock. It's around the world. You, you have to have some kind of presence in San Francisco. You have to have some kind of presence in Asia and Singapore and Shanghai. Otherwise, you're dead in the water. So that whole execution game and finding those guys who can both understand creativity and a vision and then get, get everything executed, that, that's really hard. That's, that's really, really difficult. And I think that's where most people fail in, in, in combining a team that equals both execution and vision. 
and, and creativity because, I mean, haven't we all seen, you know, I mean, these great creative guys, I mean, they end up playing guitar when they're 50. Fuck them. So, today, of course, I will try to tell you a little bit about my vision. And it's, 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 it's I have to warn you, it's shit boring and it's shit complex. But it's, it's something I definitely want to want to give to a, a, a mean a set of people in a country with a lot of intellectual power. Nobody is afraid of working really hard, and everybody's a little bit hungry. So if you get this, if and if I'm right, I might be wrong. Remember, it's 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 about these software as a service. We have we've learned it now. It's in the cloud. Of course, everything has to be in the cloud. I mean, my kids they will probably. My five-year-old, he will probably never install an exe file or a DMG. He, he will not know what it is. It will, of course, run in a browser because everything else is stupid. It is about big data collecting a lot of information. Big data is, a, is, is of course, extremely overused as a term, but big data is having a lot of information or stated in another way, no more than the rest. And then, of course, social because, as I said before, I don't think we'll buy stuff in the near future without knowing whatever somebody thought about it or at least thought about the first version. So big data, very, very much big data is, is the core. But, but big data comes when you collect and when you, I mean, you, you need to have, make some, some interesting apps to collect this data and let, get, to get the permission to, to get all this interesting data from from your potential clients or your users or, or for your product. And the APIs, for people who don't know what it is, go home, study it, understand. It's an application programming interface. It's fairly simple. It's a little bit more advanced than Excel, but it's, it's doable. And when you start understanding this whole world that opens when you see that you can connect everything out there behind the browser. You can have your own website. You can have a Google sign-in with your Google apps. You can have a Facebook sign-in. You can suck data out of wherever you want from your compact, get, get the analytics on it. Start making a, a product that is not necessarily totally new, but it's, you can represent whatever out there in a new way. You can easily make a new user interface for Facebook. The, I mean, the APIs are there. You can suck out the data. You can play with it. You can, you can show it in all the ways you want. Twitter, Instagram. They, they're, they're, I mean, the best, the best um, websites and the best web services out there all have pretty sexy APIs. It's a little bit hard to keep up with these APIs because they change all the time because it's based on the on the data model behind Facebook, whatever website or web service. So get into it, start drawing, start understanding how does it all work, who talks to who, what talks to what. And then you're from a country, I mean, you guys have access to really smart, smart people and a lot of good data scientists. So then use your creativity to suck in data that nobody thought about before, but it's all there, you can just suck it in. And then start putting some interesting algorithms on it. Of course it would be interesting for a guy who grows carrots to get all the pictures in his area around him that have some orange in it. It's gonna be a lot of orange things that are not carrots, but it's, it's an interesting little algorithm to put into his little data research, competitive research. There's endless amounts of, of small things you can do. Um, Facebook just released so that their hashtags are working. Think about it. Think about how much interesting data you can get out of these hashtags just from this room if, if, if anybody wanted to really start to crunch it. So basically, use these APIs, make some crazy mashups, create some data that you collect from whatever application you have, put some algorithms on the data, and publish them again back to the users in a, in a meaningful way. There's a big chance that 50 per 80% of you guys don't have a clue what I talked about, 
but you'll get there. So, go home and read on APIs. So, another thing that is, that is important for me to, to say when, for some reason, somebody invited me to come and speak to you guys because they think I have the truth. Of course I don't, but I do dare to have an opinion. And I have been super lucky to be, I have had actually 12 to 15 Polish people around me for the last five months. Mostly because um, the, the girl who takes care of the house is Polish and all the guys who just rebuild our house were Polish. And what a great set of people. I mean, you should be proud. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool attitude. They were a little bit baffled that I just gave them the key to the, to the house and nobody was looking after them. That was a little bit new. And also that I had money you know, just on the table and my credit cards. But when we got over that, we, we, have, we, have, we have a really good relationship. And the good thing with all these fantastic Polish people who work with me is they're not afraid of working hard. That's our problem in Scandinavia. I know some of you think it's, it's the land of, of, of gold and everything is good. But everybody is so fucking lazy because they have everything and they can't understand why they, why, why they shouldn't just have more from the government. But I feel there's another attitude here. But I think there's a couple of things you should think about. I really love it. I love the people. I think you guys should, from the startup and entrepreneurial scene, grow up a little bit. It's a good... You should stand up. I mean, show the world, show the world that you, you're here. Don't hide, don't, don't, don't have this Eastern European little bit uh, dull. <laughs> Tell the world you're here. Poland is a one big fat opportunity. Be happy. People here are hungry. It's, it's the key for having successful entrepreneurs. There's enough brain power. So smile, stand out. It's good. Wear the fucking orange suit. I mean, do something. And then don't be a follower. There's nothing wrong with copying. There's nothing wrong with taking an existing business model, go into competing in the same area. But try to innovate. It's, it's, it's possible. And it, it, and it hurts a lot because, of course, when you innovate, you don't know what's there. So you will, you will, you will fall a lot because you have no idea what you're stepping into. But you will learn and you can come back and you can always say, I'm sorry. There's nothing wrong with that. And then I think that, that what I see, I have quite also some, uh, quite a lot of Polish entrepreneurs coming to, to my, my home and pitching stuff. And it, it's, it's like sales is not, I mean, this is not America. Of course it's not. I mean, the taxi driver is a fucking 10 times better sales guy than me when I come to Los Angeles. 100 times. I mean, he's also doing a script. His mother is a psychic and his father is the CEO of Coca-Cola. Okay, okay. But... I'm not saying we should go to that level of sales. I'm just saying rehearse, pitch each other, pitch somebody from the US, pitch, pitch on Skype, do, do videos, exercise the sales skills. It's extremely important. That's how you, you make a profitable company. It's not by sitting in a basement and typing for six months and think you have a perfect prototype. No, no, no. Get it launched. And if you're, if you're actually happy with it when you launch it, then, you're way, it, it, then it's way too late. You cannot launch, you can't be happy with the, with, the, with the ideas and the products when you launch them digitally. You just put beta on it, remember Gmail? It was a beta for about seven years. Pretty cool. And then kill, kill the attitude, be more happy. Get, be forward, as I said before. So that was the end of the Polish notes. And then I think it's also a lot about finding your niche. And um, that, uh, it's of course impossible when you're, when you're searching for or innovating, then you can't find your niche up front. But, but if, you, if you do know something or a little bit about a special area, a special business area, logistics, whatever, then of course you should go down that direction. I mean, there's no reason to, to try to be a... A, a, a wrestler, if if you're not, if you're if you're tiny and not not strong, so so that whole that whole paradigm has been, I've been trying a lot to find a way to, to really find a perfect um, analogy on how to find your niche, and, and the 
the only thing I could actually find was an old, an old part of, of, of Californication where I think they cornered pretty well. Can you play that? Do we need an occasion? Life is Very good, high. business is better. Let's party while this bitch can still get wet. Oh, you guys are great together. Baby, tonight we are kicking it old school. Condoms, coke, and lobster claws. Meet me after work. I reserved our favorite room. Mars. Don't Mars me, short bus. Turn over. I gotta get your tail. Oh. You sure you don't want me to step outside? Please. I've had way grosser dudes than you staring into the business end of my cooter all day long. Porn. Thanks. Got it. How's that working for you? I don't know. I mean, I love it, I do, but I'm just not getting the kind of jobs I really want. You gotta be careful, one wrong move and you end up the ass licker. Oh! I'm loath to ask. You're watching some porn, and there's two girls and a guy. One girl, she's clearly the star, but the other one, she ends up tonguing the dude's balloon knot while he fucks the shit out of the leading lady. That's what I'm afraid of. Chocolate starfish duty. Come on, you're far too pretty for such things. You really think so? I do. You could cross over. Go mainstream. I've seen it happen. Don't tell her that. Don't fill her pretty little head full of Hollywood bullshit. She does what she does, and she's good at it. That's the secret. You find your fucking niche, and you stick to it. Like me, I could branch out. I could diversify. But no, I wax hairy tacos. Maybe I bleach an asshole or two. That's my thing. One wrong move. You end up the ass licker. Words to live by. Give me some. One wrong. Oh yeah, <clears throat> one wrong move and you end up the ass licker. Um, so identify what you're good at. So I think that's uh, that's more or less it for me. I would like to have some questions from the from the audience, and I would also like to thank you, to say thank you to Lukas. He's, uh, I think he's behind the, the idea that I'm here. And uh, then remember, it's, um, it's simple. It's not necessarily easy, but it's actually fairly simple. So that's all, and um, thank you very much. Please uh, don't be shy. Shoot some questions and shoot some hot ones and criticize some of my bullshit, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have a few questions. To be honest, I have some, some impressive notes here. Because <laughs> I'm going to interview you just after that. Anyway, before um, anybody else would like to shoot the question, I want to ask about this niche. Because, um, we hear a lot about finding our niche. Of course, you know, being good at what we do, of course, is a key. But sometimes people are a little bit lost and they don't know what they can do, what will be your advice for those? Well, I mean, in, in the US, in the whole tech press, and don't read too much of that, it's, it's mostly bullshit, and you don't learn too much, but, but sometimes this whole idea of pivoting, that, that sometimes you, you have to redo it, and, and start over, or, or do it in, in, an, in a whole other way than you thought of. Of course, the online marketing part is a good way to test it, and that's, I think, we're, 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 I'm seeing a lot of really good companies now. They, they don't have the best products, but they, they do the math and they say, okay, how much money do I make from selling one unit? And then they start in the other end and say, okay, I buy some AdWords. Then I look at how many people click on it. And then I look at how many actually convert into buying the product. And that you can do with everything from newsletters. I mean, that, that's just math. And I'm a little bit surprised I haven't seen better execution of that. But if you're, if you're doubting, then you just put, and the good thing with, with online media, you can buy it pretty cheap. You can go into your AdWords or your, to your Google, a Facebook account and buy a hundred bucks of advertising. And then you can start seeing, okay, how many people are clicking on it? How many are actually coming to the site? How, how long are they staying? How many, how many of them end up buying something? And how much profit do I have? Can I take money back again? and pump money in to make more revenue. Remember, that's old school marketing. And I think a lot of people forget that. They want to see something go viral and have a million or two million users, but you don't need that anymore. 
There is we, a business we, model. We were talking today about what, what, you know, what would be the best motivation. And so if somebody would like to become a billionaire, that's not a good motivation because you know, money is not what is... I think it would be way better to play the lottery. <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, but be, that's... Be, be, <laughs> money, man, of course, everybody is driven by money. It's nice to have enough finances to do whatever you want, but it's not going to make you rich alone. I mean, it's the drive and, the, and, and the, the spirit of it. I mean, you can't stop doing it, and, and you know that. And there's nothing wrong. Remember, we just heard this um, guy telling about it's 1% it's of your that has this chance. So there, it's, it's kind of weird that it's, it's so popular, and, but, it, but it's because it's, it's a little bit myth, mystical. You know, it's, oh, how do they actually do it? And everybody thinks that, I mean, of course, if you have a that fucking boring job in a bank. Of course, you're dreaming about being one of those technology guys who got rich really fast. Yes, to rent a uh, but, airplane. But, but, it, but, but, it, but there's no match. It's not the same people. I could not work in that bank, and the guy in the bank could not go bankrupt. <laughs> you know, so it's 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 always a risk. Yeah. Um, we had a very hot discussion before lunch about Facebook. Um, you, you mentioned Facebook a few times. What do you think, in which direction will Facebook go? Um, will we have a second or um, Facebook or something similar or something which will kill Facebook, for example? Of course, over time something will, will kill Facebook, but I don't see it within the next 10 to 20 years. Oh, so long? No, not really. There will be a lot of niches, like with dating. Remember dating, it was like a couple of big websites and then suddenly it became all kind of niches. Talk about niches. I mean, weird farmer dating. <laughs> farmer you know, dating, music yeah. dating. Mid midget dating, it was all kind of <laughs> weird stuff. But of course it was a good way for minorities to meet. And of course there will be some, some stuff going out of new, new social networks and, and of course, I mean, there, there, there might be a really big one coming out of China because they don't really adopt and allow Facebook. But as I said before, I mean, I think everything I do right now, I'm a little annoyed if I can't just lock in with my Facebook. I don't want more usernames. I don't want more passwords. I'm super happy with just pinging in with my with my face with the Facebook Connect. You mentioned as well being a follower or innovator. So for some people, it would be better to follow some ideas and for some innovation, because I don't really believe that everybody can be innovative. No, 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 no. There, there's not enough. There's not enough uh, time to to have, or I mean, eyeballs to, to have everybody innovating. But but there is a lot of innovation going on. But if, but but there's nothing wrong with 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 just entering a competitive business. I think the most successful internet entrepreneurs in the world right now. I'm not sure if it will work for them. The Samba brothers from Rocket Internet. I mean, they have built a company that will probably in three, four years, it started three years ago, in three, four years it will be larger than IKEA. They just went into every market, it took, they did what I said about the marketing, put in some money, see what comes out, and they are now the, the, the biggest online um, fashion store and also starting to get into furniture in, beyond, in, in more than 30 countries. Um, I will want That's a copy business, but... Mm -hmm. But then they innovate down in the supply chain. How do they get all this stuff shipped? The quality, all of that, yeah. Because some people say it's you know it's best to take a, a little bit of from from there, from there, and from them, put it together, yeah. and you are the best follower, and you earn money, and you're happy, successful. Um, there is there is another thing um, which is very interesting. You said you were really high, you you um, you were a millionaire, and then you've lost everything, and then you're on the top again. Maybe mm, not young people in Poland, but still sort of my age people are not so risky. And um, I think it's, um, it's quite common that, that sometimes we have an idea, but we're so afraid that we will not make it, that we will go bankrupt, that we don't do it. Yeah, but that's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> because it, 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 I mean, that's all. I'm also always a little bit, you know, cautious when I promote. But then we, you know, but but then we really sorry for ourselves. Like looking back in ten years, Jesus, ten years ago, I could have opened uh, company yeah. X and now be rich. I don't know, or or especially have flexible time. You mentioned that your family. That's yeah. very important. 
Um, I have three kids myself, so I know how flexible time, you know, works for me. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I've always been working from home. It's a, it's a, it's fantastic, but at the same time, I'm also, also working. Yeah. I mean... And they look at you and they see you on laptop. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good and bad, and, and also, it's, sometimes you have to be careful what you wish, what, what, what you wish for, because... Because it may happen. I mean, it's, <laughs> running these companies, it, it is a full-time job, because just as we're going, starting to get the kids to bed, you know, start to read a story, the guys from San Francisco are, is on a, in a call, and then whenever we finish with San Francisco, then China gets up again. So, I mean, it is 24-7, and I mean, I just love it, but it's, it's not for everyone. When you've lost everything, what did you feel? Were you really upset, or you just decided to go on and try something else? Of course I was upset. I mean, I, I was an idiot. So I, I was angry with myself, but then again, I could just keep on doing what I've always done. I started interesting companies. I was super lucky to have, uh, you know, first of all, a lot of people helping me out, just friends. I mean, quite some of my friends are billionaires, so it was not that Why hard. do you think it didn't work? <laughs> and, um, and then I was also very, very lucky that, um, yeah, maybe I should tell this story. So trade shift, we, um, there were some guys from the government who came to my house and said, well, we want to do this electronic invoicing. And I was like, that's fucking boring. But then I kept listening and then I saw the, the, the idea, it was, it was pretty big, that if you take a really big company or the government, they have uh, t one out of 10 is hired just to type in invoices. Comes in an invoice which comes from a computer, but you type it in again. So I could see there was a big cost cutting. I, I started to understand it. So then we agreed to actually start a project. They wanted to do consulting, and I said, no fucking way. I said, we, we're building the product, and then people can download it or not download it. What am I saying? They can take it, they can subscribe and s sign in online. And then we found out, oh God, we need 40,000 hours of code. We need people to code for 40,000 hours to actually get our vision done. And that was when I felt really lucky because I just tweeted out, you know, who wants to code and get some shares? And in 48 hours, we had committed 120,000 hours of code from people who just wanted to be on it. So that was, of course, my big, my, my lucky strike that I could actually build something without having money. But it's also an advice I want to give to everyone, you know, because it's so much about different skill sets. There are probably, for sure, there's two, three groups here of good coders. There's also two, three good groups here of really good business developers and sales guys. And it's about identifying those bridges, and that's why networking like this is amazing. I mean, I've always, I've always been going to these conferences when I was uh, 20 and 21, when we had our ad advertising agency. I couldn't pay for it because I don't know if this is expensive, but it was really expensive, the best conferences in New York. So I applied as a press, so I got my press badge. And I got my wife to film and so we got there, we went there, and then we, we also interviewed everyone. So we got, you know, we tapped the brains of, of the best. And these master classes were was amazing. And then we I learned, of course, people all over. So whenever I need a, I mean, how do we fix, uh, how do we calculate, you know, the risk of lending money to small companies in London? Then I always have somebody, oh, we can call him because he probably did it before. So building that network and, and actually talking to people is, is extremely important on, a, on events like this. It's also very dangerous because you can also spend all your time on it, but I don't have to say that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You have, to, you have to do it in the right manner. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Morten Lund, szanowni państwo. Thank you. Will you stay with us for a second so some other people can ask me questions? Szanowni Państwo, i tym też wspaniałym, inspirującym wystąpieniem kończymy pierwszy dzień Grow Up Startup Inspiring and Connecting. A przed nami jeszcze chill out networking właśnie, którego możecie dokonać.